Um, first, I just want to say that obviously we're here um, on the unceded um, territory of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam people. I think it's interesting, um, I'm not indigenous, and for me to be able to speak these words as a non-indigenous person helps me understand that there's a narrative that I'm breaking that I am actually kind of stepping out of what I was taught what, about what Canada was, and it isn't the same that I thought. So it's an interesting way to kind of reflect on that, and I invite everybody to do that as well, because I feel like land acknowledgements, it's actually really odd for the rest of the world, and even for Canada, for large parts of it, land acknowledgements aren't done. And to recognize that the land that we're, 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 we're standing on has been, um, you know, for time immemorial, um, the, the, the place that people have lived. And uh, us as settlers, um, we have a responsibility to acknowledge that. So anyway, that's something to think about. So as um, Sam said, uh, I've been working a long time. It feels crazy <coughs> at times how long I've been in this business, but over 25 years now. Um, and uh, I do a lot of different work. Um, in 2016, I kind of stopped the agency work I was doing and really focused on what I call creative technology, which is working with organizations. Uh, mostly I've been working with the arts. Uh, that is a big focus of the work that I've been doing. Hi, come on in. Are there seats? Has anybody got a blank seat beside them? No, yeah, you can take that one. Yeah, take mine. You go ahead and take that for now, yeah? Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Eli will go get more chairs. We're working on it. All right. Um, so, um, one thing that I wanted to say too was that, um, has anyone seen this before, the dragon giraffe? Okay, all right, I know this is gonna seem weird, but if there's a word that you don't understand and throughout all of the presentations that you're gonna see today, just put your hand up like this, rather than having to say, I don't get it, or, you know, and then what's kind of cool about this, if you do that, is that sometimes other people don't know what the word is and they'll put up their hands at the same time and you're like, awesome. So let's just try that as a group. Can we just do the dragon giraffe once, just so you get a sense? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so if you don't know what a word is and you want an explanation, just put up the dragon giraffe and we'll be happy to explain it. Okay, make sense? All right. So first off, how many here have a digital strategy in your organization? Put your hands up high. Okay. You guys are, well, that's actually probably about statistically right. 81% of organizations do not have a digital strategy. Which in 2019, <laughs> catch up, 2020, uh, is quite uh, a surprise, right? Like we think about how integrated digital is. So this was a, a Nordicity did um, through um, uh, ArtsBC uh, a review. They interviewed, I think, 250 different arts organizations in British Columbia around what they thought around digital. And I just wanted to put a few little highlights just to set the stage, which is that a uh, majority of organizations cite a lack of funding while remaining largely unaware of free tools that can help um, with their digital um, uh, aspects and free up staff capacity. And most aren't ready for a comprehensive digital strategy, but they're ready to learn about different digital tools. So that's kind of like a little bit of a step into it. And I'm going to talk today a little bit about how you can kind of set your bar of where you are in terms of your digital maturity um, and how that works. And then this is always interesting, who here has contact with your board? So boards apparently have a big role to play, obviously in strategy, but are also oftentimes the ones that are unclear about the impact of digital, because they're not necessarily in the organization understanding how these pressures are showing up. So that's an interesting thing. Okay, so the choice that we have right now is to recognize that the rapid and unpredictable rise of online technologies has irrevocably changed how constituents behave. And I'm using the word constituents because that includes customers, clients, supporters, donors, members, whatever you want. So I just like constituents. Um, in order to brave this new world, we need to understand and adopt new models of thinking and strategies to build, sustain, and grow our organization. So the question is, how do we do that? So what we've been working on, and the we here is CAPACOA, and so as I mentioned, I work with a lot of arts organizations, and CAPACOA is the national organizations for associations of performing arts organizations. And then it's like Canadian Association of Performing Associations, and then in French, which I don't know. So I'm just gonna say CAPACOA. And what we've been doing is really looking at arts organizations and trying to help them understand where their digital um, strategy is. So a lot of it is directly applicable, and because of the many years that I've had working in social change, I've made some changes to make it 
much more broadly applicable to all of you folks. So these digitally integrated organizations, what do they look like? Well, they fundamentally use digital technology. And this is your chance as well to kind of think, is this us? And I'll show you at the end, we have a survey that you can do online and get a little bit more of an insight into where you sit. Has an innovative culture to manage change. And largely, you know, what's interesting is, is that even though we kind of can give this the, the kind of not-for-profit you know, sector a nod because, you know, you know, we're so passionate or whatever, I feel like we actually do have an appetite for innovation and change. And obviously, everyone in this room, by being here, is showing some of that appetite for change. Also, it's very hot. I don't know. Is that, <laughs> am I right? You are yeah. right. All right. I don't know what to do about that, but somebody will. OK. Um, performs core operations with digital tools. And this is a big um, aspect to it, like understanding that you're using things to actually move your business work ahead. Efficiently interacts with users, partners, and vendors. Um, integrates across IT systems. This is a stumbling block for so many organizations that I work with. It's like everyone has a very siloed approach to the different aspects around technology. Can deliver a digital user-centered experience. Like again, understanding where our constituents are at means that we need to address and talk and engage with them online predominantly. You know, um, even like I, I'm right now I'm working with Pacific Opera Victoria and uh, their, their audience is 65 and up. Right? Uh, but yet, digital is still a big part of how they communicate. It's email, um, but it's still digital, which is really interesting. Collects, transforms, shares, and uses data uh, to make decisions. And this is also a big stumbling block for a lot of organizations. And I think partly the issue is, is that a lot of EDs um, have a gut sense, or program directors and you know, program officers, program staff, they have a gut sense of how it's going to work. Well, in the years of experience that I've had, I, I think it's like this. And the truth is that things are changing so quickly that that gut sense is sometimes wrong. And so data, which can translate into knowledge, which then can translate into a better decision, is really, really important. So that's a big piece to it. So um, in the time that I have, I'm going to kind of set the stage with, like I said, about like how we think about this and to give you some ideas to place your organization um, on this um, digital maturity assessment. So basically, based on some work that the Business Development Bank did around innovation um, and kind of how value is created today, we came up with our own version of this, which is one is, is that we use two measurements. The first is digital intensity. So you could think about this as how many things are you using at once? What is digital in your organization? And then the other is digital culture, so the ability to implement change. And of course, as we all know, this is about change management. In a large part, the idea of how people can accept the changing ways that things are uh, needs to be managed. And it needs to be a kind of at a senior or executive level, right? So this is the way that we look at that in terms of um, plotting an organization. Um, and so you'll see that there's four boxes um, you know, emerging at the bottom left. And this isn't actually 50-50. It's split slightly differently, but just for the purposes of representing, it's nice to see it in this way. So emerging is obviously an organization that's just trying to get a handle on things, and their culture is still one where they're still nascent in their adoption of technologies. Technocentric is where there's like tons of different tools. Everybody's like, I got my own tool. Uh, but there isn't any real strategy or leadership from the top saying, like, this is the direction. So you might see this as an organization that literally has like a multitude of tools. And on the other side, techno shy is where their leadership is like, yeah, let's do this. But for whatever reason, staff is resistant. There's not enough of the cultural change that allows them to actually get it done. And then, of course, what we're hoping for is integrated, where both the digital culture is supporting and there's the right set of tools that's creating an environment that people can actually use. So the kind of meta point here, though, is that it really is about change management and leadership. Um, David Rogers has got a great book called The Digital Transformation Playbook. It's a little geeky at times and very corporate kind of focus. So, uh, but still, what he talks about in terms of digital transformation is really true. We know that there's a bazillion million different kinds of technology solutions out there, right? You just have to Google whatever it is that you want, and you can find dozens uh, for any niche thing that you're looking for. So it really does come to, down to strategy and leadership and this new way of thinking, which is really a digital first mindset. So how do you do that? Well, one. You do need to define your digital strategy. And 
What I've been doing is working with organizations around their strategic planning process and trying to infuse that process with an understanding of, di of digital. Right? So really, there's not any area of the work that people are doing that couldn't be informed by using uh, digital. And I mean digital in the broadest sense, uh, whether that's you know, hardware, software, software as a service, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then this mindset of digital first, right? It is actually really interesting because you start to understand, like I'm, I work with the Powell Street Arts Festival, and so much of their um, uh, work is uh, on paper, right? Because they're signing up artists with paper. They just moved to a digital form for getting um, artists to sign up. But it's all of that. And that's just because that's the natural way that the staff previously had kind of approached it, right? So, so we need a, a form, uh, we'll write one up and, you know, print it out and photocopy it and et cetera, et cetera, right? But changing that to a thought of, well, how can I use digital to make this process more efficient um, is really the one that's important. And then, like, what we're going to be learning a lot today is just investigating these tools. Uh, you know, Eric's going to be talking about and hopefully getting some wisdom from you guys, which is really awesome because what I also know, and this is also the opportunity for you to chat amongst yourselves, uh, later today, not now, um, is the fact that you probably, your problem right now has probably been solved by someone else in this room, right? Which is a really cool way to think about it. This isn't ground necessarily that you have to solve yourself, right? So power in the collective. Investing in training is a huge deal, definitely. And I'm, you know, uh, imagining that everybody here, you know, has been, had the experience of being thrown into something where you haven't had enough training and you're expected deliver in a way that seems like impossible given the time or whatever. And then using this data, if you have it, to actually do uh, make better decisions. Um, and you know, it can be anything from understanding like what is the actual segmentation of the people we're trying to reach and how do we actually talk to them in a way that makes sense for them. Um, that's achieved through data. You know, are we programming, like I'm, I'm another client I'm working with is the Revelstoke Arts Council. Uh, you know, the programming that they're doing on a yearly basis is based on their segmentation. And what we found is that the segmentation that they were using, you know, intuitively, like based on who they felt was coming, et cetera, et cetera, wasn't actually who was coming. So they made all these decisions on their programming that could be better supported by understanding that audience, right? It seems simple, but it actually is quite complicated and actually. And then, you know, letting yourself, you know, a little compassion and understanding that it isn't all going to happen at once, that there is a process here that you have to take time to. So one of the things that you know we've done is we've sort of broken down organizations into these areas. You know, I keep doing five because it looks like it should be five, but there's only four. Um, and the way that we think about it is, is like these are the areas where digital has the most impact, and to kind of think about them in that perspective. So obviously, first is programs. So that's the doing of the thing, whether it's advocacy or it's a program delivery, et cetera, et cetera. Um, engagement, marketing, promotion, um, dissemination. That's a big one, obviously, you know, social, et cetera. Um, operations, um, back of house, you know, so just like everything that happens behind the scenes, um, admin, governance, uh, finance, all of those things land up in operations. And then fundraising, um, which for many organizations is really important. How many organizations here are charitable organizations as well? Yeah, so fundraising is a huge part, um, and that's another part where obviously digital has a huge impact. And you know, like I was saying earlier, like these are where the silos happen, right? Like so fundraising has got their own membership development database, but they don't share it with operations or they don't share it with engagement. So engagement has a, an email list that they use that isn't related to, you know, that's the, where the silos happen, right? Finance has a completely separate system, et cetera. So I'm just going to talk really quickly about some of the benefits of each of these areas. And then I'm going to turn it over to Eric, who's going to kind of keep talking about the, the aspects. And, how am I doing on time? That's pretty good. Right? I got three minutes. Is that right? Ooh, okay. Um, seven minutes. Okay. All right. That's good. Two minutes each. All right. So program delivery is obviously a really key part. How many organizations here do program delivery? Okay. So obviously leveraging tools to empower staff. So it's really just this idea that you can take these tools and increase staff capacity and efficiency. Now, that's not so that you can then load up the staff with other things, but it's just to take away some of the drudgery and some of the things that you don't like. In fact, that's a really great way to think about technology in general. It's like, what are the things I don't like, and how can I get technology to help me solve those things first, right? Because sometimes you end up like, 
What do you think? Yeah? You recognize that? Yeah, we've worked together a lot. Um, so um, that's an important piece. And then also collaboration. Like that is a huge part of how you can step into a much more supportive culture, in fact, as an organization, using collaborative, collaborative tools. Um, and also it just becomes a lot easier to do work. Um, everything from Google Docs. And I'm not going to, I have long lists of tools. And this is obviously like the beginning of a much longer workshop. But I think that with all of the people here today, you'll get some really great um, aspects of that. Um, using online intake for grants and programs. Anyone here using uh, any kind of intake form that's got some kind of pipeline or workflow associated with it? That's a really powerful thing. And if you like have you know WordPress with Gravity Forms and uh, Gravity Flow, you can set up a pipeline of intake that's really powerful, not for very much money, like under 500 bucks. Um, and sharing website maintenance is just like the idea that like again. Spreading out the um, accountability and ability to maintain all of these different systems helps break down those silos. So typically, website maintenance ends up being in the marketing or comms, and that isn't always the you know place it could be. Dashboards. I'm super into dashboards. Anyone here use a dashboard, Clipfolio or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. They're very inexpensive, and you can pull in all of these different uh, things. So, for example. Uh, one of my clients is uh, um, CMHC Granville Island. They've got like a bunch of different websites. So with one dashboard, we can pull all of the Google Analytics and make one nice little report, right? And then pull in social and have like basically a dashboard that shows, you know, reach because right? that's their kind of important qualifier. Like how many people have reached this month? That's very easy to do, um, and you can pull in financial data and et cetera, et cetera. And obviously, member management is a really important. As well and CRMs and I call them constituent relationship managers and I think Leah, you're, you're talking about CRMs yep. right okay. operations still so much more project management um, you know uh, Eric will mention that as well um, comm tools so like slack um, Microsoft teams uh, everyone here know about TechSoup yeah okay because office 365 you know the tool set that they have um, you know, with Powell Street, they're really leveraging Office 365, right? You know, they're using the online um, uh, programs, obviously, you know, Word, Excel, yada, yada. But they're also using Power Apps to do their uh, content management. Uh, they're using forums now for intake of artists, like I mentioned. Uh, they're using Teams to communicate because their staff is uh, young and doesn't like to be in the office. Um, so they spread out and they use Teams to do that. And they're even thinking about how to use streams, which is uh, Microsoft's way to kind of package up videos and stuff like that. Uh, security handling like passwords. This is a huge problem. Oh my gosh, folks. Like, I've seen this like a terrible way. Like, oh yeah, we, we handle our passwords. They're in a book, right? <laughs> and you're like, oh no, oh dear. So, you know, there's lots of team-based passwords that allow you to, to kind of assign and revoke um, um, access. Accounting online. Uh, as ED is like an organization I worked with was like almost 120 days before they got financial data. That's insane, right? And so having online accounting would allow their ED to access, you know, the current state of affairs in a much quicker way. Um, online ticketing, that's definitely from an arts perspective, um, but, uh, and also analytics and business intelligence. So again, back to those dashboards. Okay, I got two more here. Um, Human resources and procurement. I don't know if anybody does complex procurement, but that's an area that's been really well, uh, you know, uh, turned into digital services. But I don't know if a lot of people are doing that. And human resources is also um, a useful way to intake for that if you're doing a lot. Um, engagement. Uh, this is probably the area that most people have the most um, understanding of. Oh, 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 yeah. One thing though. Uh, structured data. Does anyone know what I mean when I say structured data? Okay, I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of this because I forgot about that. That's really important. Um, and development and fundraising. Um, again, so many really important aspects. Probably the biggest impact that you can have, if I were to say, is to get a CRM. Um, it is the most tricky to install and um, get up to speed and get everyone to do the buy-in. But to do all of these things, like segmentation and donor stewardship, it's super powerful for that. Um, who here has a CRM? 
yeah, okay, like that's a good majority. Like a couple of years ago, it would have been like, what? So that's really, really, that's great. Uh, because I feel like that's a really important piece. The next part of that, of course, is using it in the way that you can. And that's where it's back to training, right? Um, okay, that one more thing that I wanted to talk about is this whole structured data piece. Um, and so, as I mentioned, um, I'm part of Capicoa, and uh, I'm actually a digital transformation coach, which I like saying, but then I kind of go like, oh God, does that sound stupid? I don't know. It just like, sometimes you just say, you, you want to say it to your grandmother and have her understand, right? And my, my grandmother does not. But um, the point is, is that what we're doing um, is called the linkdigitalfuture.ca, and the idea here is, is that if you go, and this is gonna be applied to arts organizations, but if you do events, this might apply to you as well. But if you go to Google and you say movies near me, you'll get a very rich response, right? You'll see the trailers, you'll see the posters, you'll see the times, all that stuff is right there. But if you say shows near me or dance near me or those kinds of things that are involved in the performing arts, you get a really poor response. And that's because the majority of arts organizations do not uh, structure data on their websites. And so what that means is, is that you've all heard of metadata. Well, metadata can also apply to content on your site in a way that allows Google to read it and understand what it is that you're saying. So if you go to Eventbrite, Eventbrite has really well-structured metadata to tell Google that this is an event. This is the person that's behind it. This is the date. This is the time. And they've labeled it so that it's really clear. Arts organizations don't do that, by and large. And so it's a very poor response for Google. And the trouble is, is that so in the future, well, it's really here, you say Alexa or Siri or you know your home uh, automated device of choice. You know what are some shows near me? You're going to get a very weird response because it just can't understand what's happening there. So that's our project. We're trying to do that. And so this site, linkdigitalfuture.ca, if you go to, um, we're going to be looking for other organizations. We're running a, a pilot in Canada. We've done about 30 different arts organizations to collect up their event data. We're just screen scraping it right now labeling it and then putting it into, I'm getting in the weeds now, an open graph, which is like just a way to capture this kind of disparate data in a single source and then feed it back out to Google. Um, and we're also recruiting for new, uh, oh yeah, our digital navigation program. So the other piece is, is that, so and that's where I fit in, is, is that we're offering 15 hours of free coaching for um, predominantly arts organizations. Um, to help with um, these different issues. So there's three coaches, myself, a woman named Annalise Larson, who's like an SEO, SEM, like just genius. I just can't even imagine how much time she spends figuring out how all Google and all that stuff, Facebook works. Um, and then Akulina Connell, who's another uh, coach that does a lot of strategic work. So if you're an arts organization, um, this is really applicable. If you're not, I'm sorry. But um, it's very helpful. You can check out on that site as well. We do have a survey where you can do your digital maturity assessment. It's a little clunky, but um, <coughs> if you get, do I have my number? Um, I don't. Um, no? Oh, I do. Uh, just send it to me, uh, and I'll help you interpret it so you can see where you fit on that scale. But with that, um, I think we probably don't have any room for questions now, right? We're going to keep rolling along. Oh, questions yeah. at the end. Questions at the end. Thank you.